So three weeks ago, I got a nice little surprise from Razer. I have to admit, I was pretty excited when I got a DM and they let me know they had a product they wanted to send me to check out. My little brain started to spin. What could they be sending me? This is the first product I'd ever received from Razer. Like, hands down, first one I'd ever received from Razer. I was so stoked about just them following me, much less DMing me and telling me that they were going to send me something to test and spin and, and check out. Well, a week ago, I had my answer. And to my surprise and delight, the Razer Nari Ultimate Headphones for Xbox One were in there. And a nice little package for me to check out here at the headquarters at Robitech. Now, understand, this is not a paid advertisement. Razer did not ask me to review this headset, and so I'm completely free to say whatever I want when it comes to these. Hell, I could smash them into a million pieces and use that content for this channel. Trust me, that'd get hits. However, I am not a monster, and I will not be doing that. So, join me, because here is our first ever thoughts and impressions on the Robitech YouTube channel. But first, we need to play our awesome intro. So with the retail price of $199.99, I definitely think of these as premium headphones. Though not as pricey as my Astro A50s, they are definitely in the realm of headphones of this caliber. So why the price tag? You aren't just paying for the Razer logo, are you? Well, happily, the answer is no. What the real shtick behind these headphones are is Razer's Hypersense haptic technology powered by low felt haptics. Razer puts it as haptic technology that creates touch sensory feedback for lifelike sensations based on audio cues from the game. Now you can sense planes roaring overhead or recoil from bursts of gunfire, creating a whole new layer of immersion for the ultimate gaming experience. Essentially, there's force feedback that causes your headphones to give you feedback via haptics during gameplay. I've noticed most of it during like heavy bass moments, but honestly, it was pretty dang cool. I don't, want to, I don't want to go too far ahead of myself, but I at least wanted to cover a bit of what made these special before diving in on my thoughts and feedback. So looking over the Nari Ultimates for Xbox One, I wanted to cover some of the highlights of the headphones. First off, they are wireless and meant to be used with the Xbox One. From what I understand, these will work wired with PC, but at the time of filming, I didn't even bother trying that. I'm one of those purists that if I got wireless headphones and I want them to be wireless, I wasn't going to bother trying to use them wired because I'm never going to use it that way. Now they don't require a base station or anything like that to make it work, like my Astro A50s. Once you have them synced up to your Xbox, they just work, which I pretty much very, very much appreciate. In fact, Razer calls it hassle-free Xbox One wireless connection that lets you connect directly to Xbox One and graces you with low latency connection for people who live in mansions who are going to chase their pets around and want to know that they're getting killed from up to 30 feet away. I don't know who uses 30, like 30 feet is just so far. The headphones themselves are made of unibody aluminum frame featured an auto adjusting headband with swiveling ear cups that are using cooling gel infused cushions that are made of high density foam and plush leatherette. And I like the word plush leatherette. Also, one thing I appreciate for the forehead folks like myself, though I'm not sure I notice, is it also has a hidden indent for eyes where um, you could put in glasses and they have like channels for basically putting in glasses. There's also a minimal amount of controls in the headphones, allowing you to change things like volume, the strengths of haptics, plus, and I really appreciate this, your game chat balance. The headphones also include that signature retractable microphone that has an LED indicator for when your microphone is muted. Finally, and this is unique to the Xbox One version of the Navi Ultimates, is the inclusion of Windows Sonic support, which is the latest Microsoft surround sound technology. That's what you get for $199.99, and it's backed by Razer's two-year warranty. Let's talk about getting these set up, because the box only comes with a few things. The headphones and a cable for charging. You would expect setup to be pretty simple given the box contents, and in some ways, it comes pretty close. Once you take these puppies out of the box, which it has that Razer signature unboxing written all over it, Razer suggests plugging them in for a full charge before using them, which is about four hours. Once you've completed that, you want to press the connect button on your Xbox One device, followed by pressing and holding the power button on the headset until the Razer logos on the side begin to blink rapidly. Then you just wait until you get like a static logo on the side and voila, they are synced and you get an awesome notice via an Xbox pop-up message that lets you know that you've paired with the headset. Now to be clear, this was not as intuitive and this brings me to kind of my first gripe about this headset. 
They spent a lot of time trying to minimize the amount of controls on the headset, and doing so kind of sacrificed a bit of usability. Being someone who uses tech of all sorts frequently, I finally had to look at the instructions to figure out how to sync these headphones with my Xbox One. If you don't look at the book, some of the icons they use on these things aren't entirely clear, and I'm guessing most people will have no idea what they mean either. So what were my initial impressions beyond the frustrations of getting these set up for the first time? To be honest, I thought they were magical. I never knew I needed haptics in headphones before. And not until I'd witnessed it for the first time did I know I was instantly in love. Instantly in love. Aww. Okay, that was weird. <laughs> In fact, I'd pinged Jez Corden over at Windows Central, knowing he had also received a pair, and immediately gushed on how much I loved the headphones, and specifically the haptics. However, to my surprise, he did not. And he said, and I quote, felt like I had the throbbing vein in my head. Which I guess for the first time, I hadn't actually considered that haptics may not have actually been for everyone. But for me, I thought it was amazing. So I had to think to myself, self, what should I do to ensure that putting these headphones through the paces, what would I want to know if I was going to drop $199 on a pair of headphones and wanting to ensure that I was going to be happy about my purchase? Now luckily, I wasn't as dumb as I thought I was, and I figured out a pretty good gamut of tests to see how things worked out. This is over a full week period and using them for about 20 hours. So my first test was the Great British Baking Show. That's right, it had nothing to do with gaming. But my discussion with Jez brought up a really interesting point. A lot of people use headsets for more than just gaming, and they use their Xbox One for more than gaming as well. If I was going to use these for something other than gaming, would they be a blight on the experience perchance? Well, to me, not really at all. In fact, I liked the little addition that the haptics brought while taking in the three episodes of the Great British Baking Show that I watched with them on. The voices were clear, the music was well balanced, and the experience was awesome. I would have no issue using these for watching movies, television, or anything else. I also wanted to point out that in case you always have the option of disabling the Hypersense technology at any time by simply using the dial on board the headphones. Now, okay, I'd done my television show, but now it was time to game. And I wanted to choose a game that had a great mix of all elements, and that was uh, relevant to the kids nowadays. That meant spending some time with the Obsidian Entertainment's newest blockbuster hit, The Outer Worlds. Now to me, this is where the headphones really shine, and honestly, I can think I might regret having to play these without these things on. The haptics gave the experience some extra oomph, and the headset did a great job of just getting me absolutely stunning audio experience that was super immersive. I really enjoyed using these headsets with this game, and honestly, I thought it was going to be a dead ringer for switching over to these games permanently until my third test, which was Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Given the experience up and until this point, I really thought this was just going to be a check the box, finish the game time, and I'd had the headphones that I was going to use from now until forever. But why Modern Warfare? Well, I can't think of a more robust and crazy high caliber audio experience to test these headphones against. Unfortunately, this is where the Razer Navi headphones kind of fell apart. I was greeted by the headphones' complete inability to handle the amount of bass and audio that was being pushed out during the game. In fact, I had to continue to reduce the volume of the headphone to minimize the amount of audio distortion I would get when the game had explosions or high octane moments that required a lot of bass. I also noticed audio distortion consistently during the game in the forms of clipping, clicking, and skipping. They may have been unique to Modern Warfare, but when testing it with some other games, it just honestly had something to do with just high amounts of bass. Now, when it was a more composed game experience like cinematics or standard gunfights, the headphones performed well. But given the overtop moments that happened frequently during the game, the Navi Ultimates for Xbox really impeded my ability to just kind of enjoy the uh, experience. So, for $199, I was expecting a great experience out of my Navi Ultimate headsets for Xbox. And for the most part, I very much got what I expected. In most cases, these headsets perform beautifully, and the haptics provided a boost to my gaming and watching experience I had never expected. I also wanted to ensure I added the microphone on the Navi Ultimate is also very good, and the people who I played with and tested with said that I came across very clear. I did have a few gripes though, and it is important to make sure that you guys are aware. First, there is a bit of a learning curve with these headphones, and some of the controls. You may find yourself referencing the card to realize that some of the buttons do and how to disable enable certain things after not touching them after a while. Second, 
I couldn't use these for more than two or three hours at a time. Despite the cooling gel infused ear cushions, my ears still got warm after a while and I found them having to get pretty uncomfortable. Finally, at least on Modern Warfare, there may be audio experiences and soundscapes that these headphones just cannot handle. One final note though, Hypersense may not be for everyone. In fact, some people might find, might find the technology distracting or even annoying. For me, I'm gonna keep using these headphones, and in fact decided to replace my aging Astray 50s with the Navi Ultimates for Xbox One. For the games I played, they overperformed and outperformed the Astros in every way, and I love the addition of Hypersense to my gaming experience. Now let me know if you have any additional questions or thoughts in the comments below, and I'll try to answer these when I can. Now, if you're interested in picking up your own pair of Razer Navi, Razer Navi Ultimates for Xbox One, please check out the description and the link, the link in the description below. In the meantime, hit that subscribe button, thwap that like button, and ring that notification bell if you ever want to know the next time a video like this pops up. Also, tell me in the comments if you want to see more content like this in the future. And be, and be sure to check out our live show over at Mixer.com slash Kenobi every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. for our weekly show, Robitech, where we build PCs and give them away monthly. Finally, make sure you follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Kenobi for all the latest updates. Thanks for watching, folks. Now go game. Or maybe get some new headphones. Or game in headphones. Wow, that's super meta. Hashtag beefy